Good afternoon. It's Jake Strat with the Rats Get Fat podcast. I'm joined by my very good and beautiful friend. Oh, beautiful, eh? Yes. Zazzy, Zaz Rains. And we are in the absolute beautiful tropical town of Yapoon, which is about an hour away from Rockhampton. Yeah, thereabouts. Sort of on the coast. We have travelled a very long way this morning. We've been on the road since 4 a.m. Yeah. To talk to one of my own personal favourite tattooers in the whole of Australia. Yeah. I've come down and worked out of his shop for many years and I will continue to do so uh, for many years to come if he'll have me. Oh, I think I'm sure he will. He's lovely. Yeah, possibly. He's a, uh, if you haven't met him, he's a Canadian gentleman by the name of Chris and he's been tattooing for a very, very long time. <laughs> welcome, my friend. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah, dude. How's it going, man? I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, not too much. Ed. It's been, uh, yeah, probably a little while, almost a year since you've been here last. No, yeah. no. Oh, I can't remember. Whatever. Almost yeah. a year. I think we were on our you, way down. You were driving somewhere yeah. last time you came through. It would have been like August last year, I think. Oh, oh like, for the Southeast for, Queensland. Yeah, sure. for yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty close. Because yeah. you're actually joining us this year for the SEQ. Yes, I decided to pull the trigger and do another convention. It's been about 20 years since I've been to one, so we'll see how this goes. Just a hot <laughs> minute, just a little, <laughs> just a little tidbit. Because how long have you been tattooing now, Chris? Oh, uh, it's around 96. Sure. So about 28 years ish, give or take. Wow, unreal. It's one of those things. When do you decide exactly when to date? You know, like when you started. I don't know. So it's somewhere around there. Because how did you how did you originally get into tattooing? Like, what was your first sort of exposure to the industry? Well, <laughs> absolute first. Um, I had a couple uncles that had old sailor tattoos. Absolutely hated them. So didn't not too much there. Um, but my first real memorable thing was I think it was about fourteen, and I was going with my grandma to a funeral. And we stopped at a convenience store and I could get whatever I wanted. And I bought a tattoo magazine (laughs) and it just (laughs) happened to be like the best of the best of the world at that time. So I've been trying to find this magazine again, but I can't even remember which one it was, but it had like Paul Booth, Rob Koss, Jonathan Shaw, you know, like all the old top tier of the 90s, and a lot of these guys are still right up there, but that was my first kind of major introduction into tattooing outside of the punk, skate, metal that most people my age that got into tattooing, it's a very similar story, you know? Like, it just seemed to make sense. Did you always have, like, an artistic background, sort of, like, when you were younger? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Like, I, I remember, like, really young having the He-Man trace and draw books, which is <laughs> essentially Hell a yeah. fucking prerequisite to yeah. tattooing, tracing, and then coloring it in, you know? Um, I remember pulling down old religious photos off my Baba's wall of, like, the Sacred Hearts and all that and doing the exact same thing. Would I say I was an artist? No. Nah. Not until probably I started tattooing. It kind of forced my hand to do a whole lot more than just whatever I felt like. You know, because when you draw for nothing, you just draw. And it's like halfway yeah. through, I want to change it. That's cool. Client, they are not quite feeling it when you say, no, nah, I didn't want to draw your tiger. I thought maybe we'd just do a skull instead. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't always fly. So. No. Yeah. so it forced your hand, you know. I think that's when I started to become more of an artist sick but did the high school art and all that kind of stuff but yeah because were you collecting tattoos before you decided that you wanted to get tattooed uh to be a tattoo artist yeah yeah well i i did a stick and poke on myself when i was probably 14 I what think. was it uh <laughs> have you still got it <laughs> you can just just see it underneath there okay it was a heart, but it was upside down. Okay, I can uh, actually see it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see so it. So then I put the base on it to turn it into a spade, which was tougher anyways. Yeah. And sure. then it was right was tied up, so it worked out good. But, uh, yeah, so that was 14. And then 16, got a professional tattoo. 
another one when I was 17, a couple more before then. Before I was 18, I probably had five. Yeah, holy. So. Sick. What was your first, like, professional tattoo? Uh, I got... <sighs> I still have it. It's right there on the back of my leg, an old skate logo. Sick. Um, it's killer. Not even a super popular one that I remember, but it was evil, which was just love spelt backwards with a heart and the O. And I was just like, yep, yeah, that's cool. Rad. Dope. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was my first professional tattoo. Sick. And you got that over, over in Canada? Yeah, yeah. And it <coughs> actually worked out that um, I got that from the shop that I first started tattooing at. Oh, rad. Sick. But, yeah, that was not until a few years later. But, yeah. It was cool you got an in, like, um, from sort of collecting to then. Oh, well, it wasn't really an in, but that's how you should do it. But no, no, they, they wouldn't have even remembered if I would have told my boss he wouldn't. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have even remembered, you know? Like okay. I, I would have just been like some other kid getting a tattoo at 16. Sure. So. Yeah. Because yeah. you and Gavin uh, have Tattoo Tattoo in Yapoon. And I always make the joke to people. I tell as many people as I can to come and try and guess here because it's such a slept on shop. You guys have so much talent. Oh, and cheers. you guys are just sort of like by the beach side. You guys aren't really like too over the top on Instagram or anything. Like a lot of... You know, a lot of people don't even know you guys are out here, but you guys are pumping out some of the best work that I know of. And I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess we're old. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to say we're old, but we're older. So we're maybe not as um, proficient in a lot of the social media side of things as probably you guys are. Like we grew up with them, but I was in my mid 20s when I had my first MySpace page. Sure. Mm. You know? So, yeah, man, rip, rip MySpace. That was sick. Oh, I wish MySpace come was back. Killer. Yeah, <laughs> top top five right yeah. there. <laughs> Damn, dude, it was crazy, eh? Yeah, yeah, um, man. So yeah, no, it's it's a new new world of tattooing that you have to navigate now to try to somewhat keep up with a little bit of that. But yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a new world. We've spoken to lots of tattooers that have been tattooing upwards of twenty years and. It's just this whole new, there's this whole new wave of kids that are now doing it and they're not interested in coils or they're not interested in learning like any of the old school stuff. It's just robotic dildos and um, I don't know. It's it's different to how it used to be because you're only on coil still. Yeah. You only use coil machines, yeah. I, uh, I did pick up a, an Ego years and years ago just for shits and giggles just to see and it's fun every once in a while but literally i think i've used it three times in 15 years sure yeah. you know so yeah i know it's because what, ma what machines are you currently using like what's in your arsenal that you're using day to day uh, dailies um i probably go with i got a kevin riley liner for small lining um jason schroeder Kind of for my nine traditional lines, like uh, Tony Uberneck. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, for my big lines, and then Mark Sender for nine mag kind of things, and another Kevin Riley that I use probably for fifteen and up. Sick. So yeah, those are my basics. But yeah, I've got a I've got a unhealthy habit. You I've have. Got, I've got a drawer full. Yes, you have got a drawer full. <laughs> Hell yeah. I've seen it multiple times. <laughs> I've also been tattooed by you multiple times. You've you tattooed most of my head, the back of my head, the whole top of my head, and I've collected several other tattoos from you. And um, yeah, brilliant experiences all around. I've always been really stoked to wear your tattoos. That's good. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> if, if you're not following Chris on Instagram, it's Chris underscore Van underscore R. Uh, check him out, follow him, um, and have a look at all the work that he's done. Mm. 100%. Um, it's real cause, rad. Because you post every tattoo that you do. Yep. I, I, old school, once again, I guess. I feel it's important. I'm not cherry-picking what I want people to see. It's just a proper representation of what I do. If it's a cross that's the size of a nickel, it doesn't matter, or back piece. I don't care. It shows this is what I do because that's what I do. Like, that's just what I grew up doing. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really work with trying to fit the social media side of stuff where I have this pedicured page that has this in particular look. But 
The only reason I won't post a photo is if it's just blurry or kind of shit photo. Other yeah. than that, it'll get up there eventually. I'm a little bit behind because I'm slack, but... Mm. Yeah, it's it's nice and quite refreshing. And like when you first told me that, I was blown away. I was like, what? You post every tattoo? That's incredible. Because a lot of the time, you know, don't... Do you find that you get the clients asking for stupid shit or like uh, like tattoos that aren't really ideal that like, you know? Well, I mean, it's it's somewhat our responsibility to somewhat lead. Like I've, I've never been a person to tell people what to get, but if they're trying to get something that's just bad, and I mean, that's a tough one to describe because what's bad? Sure. You know, like what I think is bad versus what I see every day on Instagram. Well, I see a lot of bad, but people eat it up. Yeah. So that's a bit of a preference, kind of like which is the better artist, Van Gogh or Rembrandt, you know? like Sure. Yeah, it's subjective. Yeah, very much. So that side of things, I mean, yeah, you just... But, but, but I'm talking but like... If you're talking like longevity of tattoos or placement i'm straight up with people you know when people want tattoos on their fingers and stuff it's like hey this is the reality of it you got to know what you're getting into and then you make an adult decision of yeah i'm okay with half of them fading off or blowing out or doing what certain tattoos are going to do in certain spots then that's cool mm. but i want to make sure you know that yeah you know not like Oh yeah, you're, it's all right. We'll do that fine line tattoo on your finger, and it's gonna look great for twenty <laughs> years. Like, you're lucky if it lasts a week. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. But people don't know that. Yeah. You know, so it's best to be transparent with oh, people. Oh, one hundred percent. If they don't like it, which happens a lot, you know, a lot of people only want to hear what they want to hear. Yeah. You know, people walk out. Well, that's cool. You know. Yeah, at least it's not on you. Well, yeah. that's it. I, I've I've absolved myself of that. It's the same as when I tattoo necks or hands like at first i just didn't you know yep. back in the day you just didn't do that mm. unless people had full sleeves you had to earn that and so you know what it's like to be honest like at least with sleeves you can cover that shit up still sure. once you go to hands neck like there's no going back from that like i mean it's it's totally different now but yeah. back then like hell you knew everybody by name that had a tattoo on their face. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, whereas now you walk into the shopping center, it's like, oh, there's another 21-year-old kid with half his face fucking tattooed. I wonder what he does for work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't even have that. Yeah, it's crazy. So. No, you don't. A lot, of the, a lot of the older guys that I know in the industry don't have their hands, their neck, or their face um, mm. just out of respect for how it used to be, I think. Like, yeah. Well, see, I, I'm a bit weird that way. I did get my neck done pretty early. But I think that was one of those somewhat burning bridges of, like, this is where I'm at yep. kind of thing, you know? Like, I remember when I got my first neck tattoo, I was stencil on. I was already tattooing for probably two years at that point. Mm -hmm. And I had the stencil on my neck, and I was pacing around like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and basically, the guy talked me into it. He's like, oh, you'll be fine. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, really though? And he's like, yeah, well, what happens if something happens to my hands and I can't do this or something? And he talked me into it. He was like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, like you could be like a photographer for one of the tattoo magazines or something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I couldn't. There's like two of those. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it. What, what were the possibilities of that happening? But I went with it and, well, here we are, you know? That's yeah. it. So it was, the same as me. Like, I'd done the ma large majority of my body before I did my neck or my hands. Um, but I like, I wish I had more skin so I could do more tattoos. Like mm. that's why I got my neck and my hand and my whole head, like very extensive work. I'm not going to do any more on my face because I think it will definitely change what I look like. But you know what I mean? Like I wish I had more uh, skin I, so I, I could I do I more tattoos. I slowed down for that reason. You know, like I really slowed down because I was like, I want to keep getting tattooed until the day before I'm putting a box somewhere, you know, like mm. that's just the way I want it to be. And yep. I see a lot of these kids and they're like fully covered. And I'm like, well, do you not like the process? Do you not like everything about it? Like, do you just want to get covered? Cause yeah. I know you've, you've met people like that. I yes. know people like that. They don't care if it's good work or bad work. They just want to be covered. They want that look. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's cool. But I would rather have one nice tattoo than 10 shitty tattoos. Yeah, I agree. But 
Yeah. yeah. You know, not everybody else agrees with that. So yeah. Yeah, 100%. I love I loved it. I loved the process of getting him. I don't anymore. I don't enjoy getting tattoos. I think the last one you put on me was you did a dragon claw underneath my nipple and it was horrible. And I thought, <laughs> well, this is the last one I'm getting from Chris. Such a sick spot. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Well, that, that's the hard part about once you get to a certain amount of having your coverage, you're going to end up with all the spots that are yeah. just no fun anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the, the real test of do you want to get a tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh so. <laughs> it's horrible. It puts you through your paces. Oh, that's why I've got this one arm that I, I so badly want done, but I'm like, I'm going to save that. Sick. That way, one day when I get one of those tattoos that it's like, no, that's the last one, I can get that one and feel like a champion again and be like, oh, yeah, I still like getting tattooed. This is easy. Yes. You know, but. You respect, man. I love it. Hell, yeah. Who do you think you get tattooed by? Oh, well, that was another reason why I somewhat slowed down because when I moved here, I Australia wasn't really as known internationally like it is now. Mm. Um like, I knew of a few people, but most of them really weren't doing anything I was interested in. Not to say that their work wasn't good, but mm. it just it wasn't what I was after, you yeah. know? Um, and I had a lot of plans for tattoos back there, and then it was like, I can't go and fly back and forth. Yeah, for sure. To get a tattoo, no. like a back piece, and fly to the States. Like, I just... Yeah, it's not... Not feasible. No, no. So I had to kind of stop and rethink a lot of stuff, and mm. which was good. You know, it definitely helped slow me down a bit too because then I could sit and think a little bit better about who and what and yeah. Yeah. Because what, how long have you been living in Australia for now? Uh, I came here in 2008. So what okay. Be, six, 16 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sick, man. Rad. And what yeah. made you want to move over? Uh, my partner's from here. Oh, um, so I met her over there, and she'd been over there for a long time, um, like eight or nine years, and she was getting a little bit homesick, so I thought, why not? Yeah, fair enough. I'd already moved a province away from my family, so it wasn't like I was right there, no house, no kids. So, mm. And I think, it was, I think I was 29, and at that time you had to be into the country by 30 if you wanted to have a working visa. Oh, wow. So Holy. I think they've upped it to 31 now maybe, but yeah. Yeah, after that, they don't really like handing them out. Yeah. So. Were you, did you get a working visa for tattooing? No. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no I, I don't even know if they'd, uh, yeah, I don't think you could do that. That'd yeah. Be, that'd be a hard stretch. Um, no, yeah. I just got a typical, just a working visa one year. Um, Originally thought I'd do the seasonal fruit picking <laughs> to try to get the second, because you can get a second year then. Sure. So I thought if I do this for so long, I can, you know, and it was, it, I probably would have already been tattooing a good, I don't know how long, 10 plus years at that time. So yeah, well, I thought yeah. it might be nice to take a break and do yeah. something different. Um, no homework, no stress, you know, like, so yeah. I did that for a few months, which was nice. What like, were you doing? Were you... Uh, sweet potato farm. Sick. Okay. <laughs> and literally all I had to do was think, don't cut off a finger. Oh, that's okay. Because I was <laughs> cleaning up sweet potatoes and then went on the tractor a couple times and it was like, okay, just watch out for snakes. Yeah. Because that's not something I ever had to deal with back, yeah. <laughs> back home. So. For sure. Welcome to Australia, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that only lasted about three months and then they had a big giant flood. And that pretty much wiped out most of the seasonal fruit work for about a three hour radius of where we were. So it was like, yeah, oh Jesus. well. Back to looks like it's back to the grind. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah, no, luckily everybody here really likes tattoos. So it, oh, they yeah. do. People are manic about it here. Mm. I find in like in Yapoon, a lot of the younger people, all the all the girls have crazy hair, like they've got nothing else to do except for like Spend money on themselves, get their nails done, get their hair done, get tattooed. You know, it's it's a it's a sleepy little place, but it's a wonder wonder uh, wonderful part of the world. Yeah, mm. down in Japan, I love it. Yeah, yeah so like I wasn't originally planning on staying mm. here. Um, my partner, like her family's all around here, so that's we why we kind of based ourselves here. But 
originally we were going to head down to Brisbane thinking it'd be easy for both of us to find work large you know large population transient so you've got people coming and going easier to work in industries like ours where mm -hmm. you have a large population you're going to have more clients you know yeah. and I just didn't know how it was going to be here yeah but um yeah no they like their tattoos so it made it easy yes sick well yeah every time I've ever come down and worked in either Yapoon or Rockhampton like it's just been balls to the wall it has been so flat out busy like you've got more people to tattoo than you know what to do with mm. but they're it's interesting because the first time I ever came here, there wasn't – no one was interested and no one kind of knew who I was until like I'd done a couple of trips and then it's like if I if I came back and did another guest spot, it would it'd book up. It's an incredible place uh, and I love this part of the world. Mm. So and you're living in paradise, man. It's sick. Yeah, you, you forget, you know, because you just like day in, day out, you walk around but then it's like when you stop and think, oh, this is something else. Yeah. Like I mean I probably appreciate it more than a lot of people because – we didn't have beaches in Canada. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, uh, not that I'm a beach person by any stretch, but it's just those little things that you take for granted. Like, my yeah. partner always laughed at the beaches that we'd go to in, in Vancouver because she's like, this isn't a beach. It's just a bunch of rocks. And literally, <laughs> that's what it was. But that's the closest we got. So sure. take, take it or leave it, you know? Yeah. So, And then you come here and, like, it's a nice beach. And it's a nothing beach for Australia. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it's just um, do you a nice, nice little town. Do you get crocodiles down here? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So you can't swim at the ocean in the ocean? You can, but you'll see them on the beach occasionally. Um, you got, like, the mangroves just out that side there. There's one that's definitely living around there. Um, Epic. Our beach that we're just 10 minutes north of the main beach here, it gets a lot of blue bottles and that on the beach and stuff. So it's like, there's, yeah, there's still shit that's going to hurt you. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. It's so Australian, <laughs> eh? Like the more north you go, it's just more, oh, yeah. da more dangerous shit. Mm. Yeah. The hotter it gets, the more dangerous shit there is. <laughs> it's funny though, because I just came back from Singapore. We went and did the um, Singapore Tattoo oh, Expo. Right. How was that? Yeah, it was good, man. But like being over the equator, being so hot, I thought, oh, it's going to be even more dangerous. But no, it's not. It's, it's not there's nothing in Singapore that can kill you. Mm. Yeah. Except for the people driving cars. Yeah. When was your last tattoo convention that you worked? And uh, whereabouts were you? Uh, it was about 20 years ago. I think it was the first Vancouver convention, actually. Um, yeah. Didn't even, I just sat in the booth and tattooed. Pretty much just booked myself out. So I didn't even really do any exploring around or looking at people too much just the people next to me on either side and yeah just head down and yeah are you doing walk-ups or are you doing bookings for brisbane i'll have a bit of both i think yeah i guess it depends on how long the days are and yeah like i've got a handful of people that are looking to line up sick sick for some time so and regulars that i know like some that i tattoo pretty regularly and some that i haven't tattooed in a few years that have moved down that way. So, yeah, we'll see. You yeah. never know what's going to actually pan out. And It's yeah. exciting. I'm, I'm keen for you to meet the guys from the Dead Man's Hand because they're all going to be there. Yeah, I have seen they're all going to be there. Um, yeah, I've been meaning to head up there, but, yeah, I just don't get out of town too much, to be honest. No. Nah. Kids and life and shop and, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, tends, it tends to pin you down a little bit sometimes. It, it can, you know, and I'm okay with it. Because I'm, like I said, I'm not as young as you guys. Whereas when I was your age, yeah, I was still doing that. And that yeah. was cool. But I'm in a different place and I'm okay with that. So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a good, um, it seems nice. Mm. Yeah. But not to say that I'm not excited to go and do something new again. Because it is. It's like doing something new. Like, I mean, yeah. it's been 20 years and it's like, it's going to be like me doing it the first time all over again. Like. For sure. Shit my pants a little bit. Of, uh, <laughs> nah. We'll see how this all goes. Uh. It's such a it's such a low-key expo. It's nice. It's uh, more I, of a social. I, I remember you guys saying that. Yeah. So that was yeah. part of the reason why I kind of thought it might be a good one to dip my toes in, so to speak. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really it's really fun and um, it's just social. Like they never really advertise, so there's not many punters. But it's more just like... It's for just, the tattooers, it's, really. It's totally for the tattooers. Yeah. Like, you'll never make much money or anything, but <laughs> it's it's a wonderful 
Expert. I'm so excited you're finally coming. Yeah. Well, then, then that's it, too. Like, I just had to bite the bullet and say, yeah, I know I'm not going to make the money that I would if I just stayed home. But that's not what it's about, either. It's yeah. like, let's get out there and shake get, it up. Get back into the scene yeah. somewhat, I guess. I don't know. Well, I think <laughs> after this airs as well, a lot of the tattooers will have watched this episode. And I'm sure you'll be inundated with tattooers wanting to shake your hand and say good day. <laughs> you know, because you don't, you don't get out of your poon very much. You, your tattoos are exceptional and, and wonderful quality. And I think a lot of tattooers can learn from you yeah. as well. Cheers. Yeah, so 100%. after this episode airs, like, yeah, I'm sure you'll be, you'll have more friends than you know what to do with. Oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> and you'll say, well, I'm coming every year. Sick. Yeah, it's nice to have something different to look forward to as well. Mm. You know? Yeah, just change it up, you know. That yeah routine kind of can beat you down a little bit sometimes yeah. and when you are so kind of isolated i guess you have to force your own hand to do a lot of things For you sure. know like it was, it was like when i met you jake like that really kind of pushed me to get back into doing shit that i hadn't for a while where it was like here's somebody that's where i was and was still doing shit and so that mm kind of just that extra push because it's all too easy to not have that when you have to do it yourself for sure yes. you know what i mean but when you've got somebody else around even if you're 12 hours away you know yeah so well yeah. i always try and if, if i'm ever passing through i always try and stop into this shop and see you boys mm. you know it's it's so sick yeah you know yeah it's a rad shop i love it it's so yeah, sick I actually um if you've ever been into royal blue you'll notice like i've put in partitions and I've actually made booths. It was from it was based <laughs> from this studio. Yeah. I went the first year that I opened Royal Blue, I went and traveled around to however many tattoo shops in Australia and I and I cherry picked all my favorite stuff that other people had done in their own shops and I implemented it. And we've got now the same partitions in our in our shop. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've worked in a few shops and some open spaces, some fully closed booths, and I've found that this was a good in between, mm. I guess, you know, like you still have a lot of interaction between anybody else in the shop, but it's still somewhat personal if somebody's laying on the table. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, yeah, it's super. Just enough. It's secure and I don't know, quite private. Because are you guys a private studio or are you more of a street shop these days? Well, a bit of both, to be honest. We always have been. It's just a matter of whether you have the time to actually do the walk ins, you know, like we never set the shop up as a walk-in shop because as you know we're kind of up and away and you kind of have to look it's not one of those shops that it's oh, like yeah. here it is look at us it's like no. we've got very discreet signage which we should probably change <laughs> <You know? laughs> i like but it i think it's, it's good. very understated and you know like that's just how we kind of yeah. looked at it you know like our clientele when we opened up the shop it wasn't we weren't doing the flash we weren't doing the street shop stuff as much so we didn't set it up like that yeah because yeah what you guys do is mostly custom large-scale work gavin's always got some big back piece on the go or you're you guys are always working on some pretty pretty serious stuff and um and it's all hand drawn, you know. Like I know you're on the iPad now. Yeah, well, I've been I've been iPadding for a long time. That's I guess my one real technology new thing that people are somewhat surprised at because I still do the coils and I'm pretty. Yeah. I don't vocal about it. <laughs> I don't know staunch about it. I don't know, but um, no, the iPad. Yeah, no, I think it's been about nine years that I've been using that. So. Mm. Isn't it a wonderful piece of equipment? It's, to be honest, you know, like you see a lot of people, even even the rotary machines and that, people talk shit. And with with your iPad, it's it's no different than tracing paper. You know what I mean? If you treat it like a tool and you use it like that, it's no different than an old tattooer using tracing paper to trace yeah. off, you know, because you set up the layers, you do it all the same. You, you can use it, you can abuse it. It's up to you, you know? Like, yeah. Have you have you dipped your toes into AI? Huh? No, no. Oh, really? No, that's uh, I guess that's yeah another staunch that I'm just like no, I don't like that at all. Okay. Um, just from my understanding of how it works, is basically any of us that put our shit out there, they're cherry picking that. Yes. You know, and I mean we do that anyways. We do that. 
whether we do it consciously or subconsciously is totally different than asking a program to do it for you. Mm. But once again, I guess it depends on how you use it. You know, like if, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe it's still a little bit middle ground with that. And I've seen both sides. I'm sure you guys saw the one, uh, Jesus one that was obviously um, an AI produced because he had like six or seven fingers or something. <laughs> When it was tattooed. Yeah. yeah no they, they got way. halfway through it and you can count them off. And it's like, one, two, oh, yeah, that's AI because AI sick. can't do fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Jesus man. was an alien. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's so, so sick. Yeah, it's like still, that. still a little bit um, new and I guess it's, it's going to be how people use it. You know, like it, it's, it's no different than anything. Like when I started, people would bring in tattoo magazines. And be like, this is what I want. Now it's a phone, you know? So sure. it's the same thing, just a different version thereof. So yes. Yeah, it's 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 wild. I um at the Singapore Expo we had like a like, like a talk panel and um and I was talking to those guys about it. They they did like a questions and answers and I threw a log on that fire by hitting them with the AI thing and and the, everyone was talking about it, it was um yeah, really and I think it's a really interesting concept because I didn't know too much about it, but I was introduced to it from Rachie Brains. We, um, me and Zuz went and stayed at her and her partner Greg's house, and she was, she had a really obtuse, I like uh, this guy wanted this really crazy thing on his whole back, and she just had no idea where to begin, and and she was kind of doing her homework and uh, and but like playing around with AI and like trying to get some ideas and stuff and man it was it was crazy and it's totally like I don't know it sort of definitely influenced me by having sort of someone of her caliber use it I'm like well I'm you know I, I'm gonna give it a red hot go as well you know it's really interesting man yeah man and I think that's where it starts to come into how you use it you yeah. know, because somebody, and I'm, I'm assuming how she would use it would be different than maybe the other person that's just going to be like, okay, yeah, let's just run that through the stencil machine and we're good to go. Oh, yeah, exactly. Sure. You know, like, because there is that very difference of that. So, yeah, I think it was just more of a, like, ideas. Well, exactly, and that's it, if you use it as that. But the pro this is just me, once again, but mm. the problem I see with that is for some people, they can get too much of that stuck. You know what I mean? It's like when somebody brings you reference and you get too stuck on what the reference is instead of necessarily just doing what you feel you need to do because that's what they want. Yes. And as soon as you put that into your head like an AI image, you're going to have that, whether that's a conscious or subconscious, like we said before, mm. it's going to be there. It'll come up sometime. It's just how much you kind of yeah, bring interesting. back to that. Yeah. I feel like, um, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like, Sometimes it's nice to just play around with all sorts of different ideas with that concept. I find when I'm doing like thumbnails or something for an image, like a lot of the time the image that you actually settle on, it's not the first thing you even think of. Mm. Like it's not even the thing you had in your head at first. You just fuck around and then all of a sudden you end up down this different rabbit hole and you're like, oh, that's fucking way better than I originally thought. Mm. So I, th I think it's good to, like, I think AI, AI can be a useful tool if you are stuck to get like a bit of a spark, but... Yeah, I think I'm a grant and like it's how you use it. And it's, I think it's good not to be reliant on it as well. Well, that's it. Like, I mean, as you get any new technology, like even, even the iPad now, like I don't know. I know I can still draw on paper. I know I can. Yeah. But I'd probably be doing this a lot and I'd probably, you know, like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I hate um, that. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's those things that you'd have to, but that was the same when I first started with the iPad. Like I was just like, this is garbage. Like if yeah. I just drew this on paper, I'd be done already. But yeah. out of necessity, that's how I got into that. So did yeah. you find getting into the iPad so long ago that your peers were like, I don't know, kind of like roasting you a bit or, or not roasting you, but just being like dismissive of it? No. Okay. Because I'm here. I had Gav. Yeah. You know, and that was it. Like, a lot of the old guys that I worked with back in Canada, there was a, some that were already doing some of that kind of stuff before I left, you know? So there was a pretty healthy mix, but I, I know what you're getting at and I could see that. Um, but once again, it, that's why I related it to the tracing paper because it's all in how you use it. It yeah. can be a tool or it can be a crutch. For sure. Your choice. 100%. You know? 
So yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, we were like talking to Pete Davidson about like kind of iPads and stuff as well, and I don't know. He had a really interesting perspective. Like tattooers back in the day, back in his day, like he said, like we probably would have used it. Like one hundred percent. Like I yeah. said, it's the same as tracing paper. Like I mean, all the old traditional designs, they're the same over and over again. Yeah. You know, and once they got tracing paper, yeah. you got a little bit better artists, you know, and, or at least they could trace better. For sure. So. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you got to utilize what you've got available oh, to 100%. you. Oh, 100%. Really? Like, like what Sailor Jerry was doing, his, he was using the newest of the tech offered to him. Yeah. Like if iPads were around in Sailor Jerry's day, I'm sure he probably would have been using one too. Mm. Yeah. Because it's, it is so easy and it's so simplistic and it's clean. Some, some of it's a mentality though too because I remember when I started tattooing, I didn't like using reference yeah, because I didn't want to have that influence. Mm. But as I got better and realized, hey, you kind of suck at a lot of stuff, you got to start using more reference. And that's when it changed stuff. But before that, I was very, no, no reference. I'll just draw what I think. And mm. yeah, it did create a style, but it wasn't really necessarily a good style, you know? Um, so yeah, even that, it's sometimes those little things that you think about that it's like, I'm so staunch about this. Like hardcore kids are a lot like that. Or, yeah. you know, a lot of those scenes like that, they get into that real definitions of things instead of just, breaking outside that mold i guess for sure yeah but i mean uh i'm saying that but then i'm gonna be the exact same thing <laughs> when it comes to other parts of tattooing too yeah. you know so well yeah you're you're very well rounded you can pretty much tattoo whatever comes through the door you've been doing it a very long time you just had to there, yep. there was no the, well the first shop i worked at it was literally uh if it comes through the door you do it <clears throat> you know like even if that was doing a tattoo out of a tattoo magazine yeah wow okay. and I, I hated that i remember the last one i did i did it because if i wanted to have a job you do that tattoo it's you couldn't turn, you couldn't turn work away or or not talk at, them into something not, better not at, well back then it wasn't about that it was like pulling teeth trying to get somebody to do your own design half the time yeah. sure because it just wasn't quite there like it was getting there but I mean, where I was tattooing, it was inland, not at a port city, so you didn't have a lot of those um, big tattoo kind of things going on. It was a good scene, don't get me wrong, but, yeah, it was still a little bit behind. It'd be like kind of like tattooing in Rocky, you know? Like, sure. It's not going to be the same as if you were in Melbourne or Sydney or, you know, Brisbane even. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I find that. I find um, <clears throat> I've never had a problem with Rockhampton people they're very, I don't know, they're, it's, they're easily to talk to. Oh, 100%. For sure. <coughs> for sure. And I love that they love colour as well. Like, you go down... Uh, well, I, they're not coming to me then. <laughs> <laughs> really? I wish I, wish I did more colour. Like, I, I do more black and grey now than I ever did. But, I mean, and I'm okay with that because it's one of those things you got to do anyways. But, I mean... I'm from Canada. Like most people there had paper white skin because you only see the sun three months out of the year, you know? So color was good. Like yeah, I use six different tones of yellow and you'd see each one. Whereas I got here and it was like, nah, you get two if you're lucky. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Because it's just, it's not going yeah. to, not going to matter. So. Yes. Are you using gray wash or are you using opaque grays for your black and gray work? Uh, I, I do gray wash. I went through phases of just adding a bit of white occasionally, but it just seems to come in phases. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. I guess it depends on what you're doing too. Like, because because I do a bit of everything, like one thing isn't always going to suit everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I guess that's where I see a lot of tattooing now is, you know, it's all very, this is what I do. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But if I threw this at you, you'd look like worse than an apprentice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but. I think people with how many tattooers there are in this day and age, people are getting into the industry and like trying to specialize from their apprenticeship. Oh, 100%. Like yeah. when I got into tattooing, that was, I had to do everything. I wasn't allowed to turn stuff away. So I did everything, even though it wasn't, you know, like what I really wanted to do. But I'm thankful for that because I'm more well-rounded than, 
these young people that are now getting into the industry that are like, well, I'm just doing trad or I'm just doing neo-traditional or I'm just doing this or that, you know? Which, which is great because you're going to get better at what you do, but shit changes. I've been doing this long enough. It's no different than fashion or music. It comes and goes. Like, I'm seeing shit now that I did back in the 90s, you know? Like, mm. what do they call it? Cyber signalism? It's like oh, yeah. old, like the, it's the fucking tribal tri- and it's stuff? It's fucking tribal with janky line work. Yeah. Sure. Tramp stamps. And, <laughs> and oh, yeah. And I, I, had a, I had a girl call up and ask, oh, do you got time? I just want to get a tramp stamp. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. <laughs> I want to see what you look like. You know, you're a 20 year old kid asking for a tramp stamp. I need to, I need to have a look and see what you look like. So yeah. I, I did a little tramp stamp on her, but Same. she called it that. That was something that we called it in the industry because you make up shit, you know, but <laughs> that wasn't something you said in front of clients. It's, yeah. It was a tattooer's term that, yeah. that went to the normies. Exactly. What? It's like it's like the boob chandelier when you hear that and somebody says that like that's less common but give it another fifteen years and <laughs> the boob they'll be, chandelier they'll be they'll be calling up for the boob chandelier yeah, you know so yeah it, oh, it's yeah. all comes it's like a big circle oh, right one hundred percent you know yeah. like even like you guys do all your traditional stuff mm. I I didn't do any traditional American when I started tattooing yeah um, there was nobody around where I started that did that apart from some of the old guys because they were just still doing the same thing they were doing. Mm. Not very well, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And there was just such a push against that. And that's where you start to fall when you start to get into specializing because you're going to come to a point where that style is not good anymore. People don't like that. Like everybody wants to find mind stuff. Everybody wants the realism, black and gray. That's great, but you know, yeah. It's going to come and go. Yeah. And if you can't do more than just that, yeah, you're, really you're going to feel it. Yeah, bottleneck yourself. Mm. Yeah. It can be really tricky. It's, yeah, it's really it's in, interesting hearing that um that sort of perspective on it because yeah, like when the times do change and they will change, of course well, they'll they change. Have, they have. I mean, I've seen it um even with a lot of the guys that were in all the magazines in the 90s and they're complaining about being slow and they're complaining about just not having the clients and it's like well yeah you're you're still just doing new school and not everybody wants new school anymore no you know what i mean and if you are wanting new school you want the best in the new school yeah so you got to either step up and it's I, i think that's where a lot of stuff comes but stuff like japanese and traditional american it ebbs and flows it comes and goes it's never going to fully go away but it's going to be a little bit more popular a little less popular Mm -hmm. that's it you know but some of these specialized kind of ones like the fine line stuff i mean hell they did all that in the 70s and 80s yeah most of us learned that it's not going to hold up it's not to say that people can't do it there's a handful but is the chances that the person that has a tattoo shop in your town going to be able to do it probably not you know what I mean? Potentially, like, yeah, that's exactly it. There, there's always going to be people that can do stuff and make it hold up, like the portraits on the fingers and shit. But yeah, what there's like maybe a handful of people in the world that can do that. What are the chances that it's going to be your yeah. local? You know what I mean? But I think a lot of people are very easy just to like take on that work without educating people and then the client's getting burnt from it. Well, it's because people want the photo. Oh, yeah. You know, there was in, in kind of the early 2000s, I remember there was a lot of people getting called out for doing the convention circuits and doing the tattoos solely for the photo. Mm. But then the tattoo would heal like shit. But they got that nice photo at the convention and they won their award and everybody was cool. But, you know, and there was a lot of people getting called out for it then. Yeah. But that's just, I guess, how they were choosing to work, you know, mm. like, and I mean, that's that's on you. If yeah. that's what you want to do, but just exactly. I feel like it, I don't know, it definitely takes, I don't know, the forefront of people's, I don't know, how they tattoo these days. It's solely for the photo of Instagram and social media and everything. Oh, I'm guilty. Like, well, I'll be halfway through a tattoo and I'll be thinking, oh, yeah, this person that I know, they're going to love this, you mm. know? And I'm thinking about that while I'm tattooing it because it's like, I like it, but 
this in particular tattoo, this person is going to send me a message and be like, that is so cool. I want something like that. Yeah. You know, like, and I'm thinking about that in my head while I'm doing this tattoo. Oh, but yeah. I think you got these people that are doing it on the bigger scale of solely, yeah. I want to do this solely for the photo. And I mean, hell, I've, I've done that. <laughs> done tattoos that were just stupid as shit because it's like, yeah, that's going to be a funny photo. You know, but yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, this was before likes or any of that kind of shit. It was so yeah. like. I feel like it's really interesting the direction that it's kind of been taken and driven with social media, particularly Instagram. Mm. Like um, it's, it's fascinating that a lot of people, the first thing they'll look at, at when they find someone's page is their followers. Oh, it's 100%. Yeah. Um, one, one thing that fucking really gets me lately that's mm. a big thing in tattooing is all the filters and everything mm. it sets up an unrealistic expectation mm. and clients don't know that's yeah. the problem they'll come in and it's like i can i can pinpoint it straight away where it's like well they extra saturate that black look at the background mm. you yeah. know like it's easy to pick out when you know but mm. people don't know and they don't understand that that tattoo's never 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 gonna look like that ever again yeah for that photo and that photo alone because it's lit properly it's fresh mm, it's in very specific circumstances exactly and it's yep. never going to look like that and it's it's hard because you got to educate people and they're like oh yeah but look i can show you photos and it's like yeah i can show you a lot of photos on the internet doesn't mm. mean it's a good idea it doesn't mean it's going to be real and last either yeah but yeah i think people have unrealistic expectations or they just don't know that's it because tattooing is kind of spread out to more people it's not like how it was when people were like yeah you get a tattoo whatever you know like but now everybody thinks they know more but they <laughs> don't really look into anything it's yeah. like oh well yeah like i'm sure you guys had the whole white tattoo phase oh kick yeah through your place where it's For like sure <laughs> You know, okay, yeah, show me a photo. Yeah, I can almost guarantee that that person lives in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, yeah. Why? Because look at their skin. They don't live in Australia. There's no way, like, seriously. But people don't know that, and they don't think about that. And y you can't expect them to, but that's where, I guess, our job and responsibility in tattooers comes in, where you got to actually tell people sometimes oh, what, yeah. what they don't want to hear, you yeah. know? And that's a good word for it, I think, responsibility. And I think, yeah, a lot of people don't take the time to ed educate their client and a lot of tattooers would just shrug and say, who cares? Yeah, I, I mean, I have to admit, I'm probably more like that now, but that's solely because tattooing has changed. Like I said mm. before, like I wouldn't tattoo necks. Now it's like if somebody wants their neck tattooed, I'll, I'll ask, are you sure you want to get your neck tattooed? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, well, that's I, I did my part. I'm tired of being your dad. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the, the sign outside says tattoo. They've come up the stairs. They've gone out of bed. They've gotten ready. They've come all the way in here to talk to you about getting their neck tattooed. It's like, you know, yeah. Like we, we can't hold your hand. We can't be your fucking dad. Because even if you do send them away, they'll just go around the corner. Well, th and that was the thing. I used to see it all the time where I'd send somebody away and I'd say, no, I'm not going to do that. And then they'd go get tattooed and then I'd look at it and I'd just be like, oh, fuck me. Like, at least I would have put in some effort yeah. because whoever did that for you didn't. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, and you just don't, you don't get rewarded for saying no. I think there was only one time I had this kid pull me up in the street where he was like, said thanks. And I was like, uh-uh. I don't even know who you are. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, like, what are you talking about? Who are you? Oh, yeah. He was like, oh, you know, like I came in once and you you said, no, I won't tattoo your neck. And he was like, thanks, because all my friends got their necks tattooed and they don't have jobs and they can't work and blah, 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 because they're all young. You know, they don't have a skill. They don't, you know. Yeah. I always tell people, if you want that shit, fine, get it. But get into what you're going to do. Oh, don't yeah. don't set yourself up a hurdle that you got to jump. You know, you show somebody that you can already do what you need to do. You don't have to worry about that. They're not going to care yeah, exactly. if you're good enough at what you do. Mm. You know, but like hands and face, like this is old school. But the first thing you see when you meet somebody is you go to shake their hand. Yeah. If you've got a tattoo on your hand or your face or your neck, they look at you. And if they don't like tattoos, they've already decided you're done. You haven't even For said sure. a, you haven't even said a word. Happens to me all the time. Exactly. Which 
in some respects, I mean, when you're on this side, I don't mind it. Yeah. Less people want to talk to me sometimes. Well, <laughs> or it used to be that way. Now everybody wants to talk to you. But back <laughs> yeah. then it was an easy way to kind of <laughs> yeah, get yeah. your distance. Yeah. Stay away from that bloke. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's super interesting. It is good. I actually do enjoy that as well. I enjoy people stay the fuck away from me. But then those that know, you know, they're cool. They're like, hey, man. Well, that's it. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same as what I perceive of you where we're not scary guys. No. We're not that mm. bikey type that yeah. everybody thinks, you know, and it's like so, so far from it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're weird art people. But, yeah. Like I mean, I can look the part if I need to, right? Yes. It's nice to have <laughs> it and not need it. Mm. You know They're what I mean? Not. Then exactly. Then not actually have it and, and need it. You know, it's kind of good, you know. You can you can seem some, like you're something you're not if you want. Mm. Yeah. You wear like a bit of a suit of armor, I guess. Mm. It's interesting. You can show the world that you can take a lick and keep ticking, you know. Well, <laughs> or when you got to throw somebody out of the shop, you know. Like you don't oh, have yeah. to put in a lot of effort because they already think, oh, this guy's got tattoos. And it's either going to go one way or the other. So Yeah. Yeah. We'll only ever throw someone out if they're if they bring their fucking kid in or they got drinks or oh bro it's so annoying crackheads uh, it's always when you're not at the shop i get <laughs> fucking 50 cunts with go- sorry <laughs> 50 people with bloody goon bags and all sorts 50 <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh god i'm like what are you bringing that in to sleep on or something yeah get out of here, <laughs> get out of here. Guy. but that, that was tattooing back in the day. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. when I started, it was a lot more like that, you know? Yeah. Like, there was always that kind of shit going on, whereas it's not, it, it, yeah, it's not the same now, and it can't be treated the same if you want it to be a certain way, you know? Because, yeah, that's how it was. Like, I mean, I remember the first shop I worked at, there was a guy that worked there, and he tattooed a lot of the triad guys. And he, you know, so they were in there all the time, groups of them, and you just learn to not pay attention to certain things. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Or you'd find stuff that it's like, oh, that shouldn't. What, what's that what, doing what's, there? What's that doing there? <laughs> oh, what's that bag of. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Is that talcum powder? <laughs> oh, that's it's obviously just baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, because back then, though, people would have been nervous to come into a tattoo shop to like. Like nowadays, people don't give a shit. They come in with the most uh, utmost disrespect. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like, but but back then, you almost expected shit like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, because I remember when I started, I didn't have a lot of tattoos, and I was only eighteen, nineteen. I'd get picked over all the time next to the guy that was in his forties that just got out of prison because he looked like a tattooer. I yeah. didn't, you know. And it was like, well, that's cool. Like, I do a nicer tattoo. I can guarantee you, but. He fits the bill. Yeah. He's the experience that you want. And some people want that, mm. you know? Yeah, it's crazy. I, I found it really interesting because I came into the industry as a collector and I'd tattooed pretty much two full legs and my whole arms and my, my hands and everything on the sides of my neck uh, before I actually started tattooing. And I found it it was better for me because when I was an apprentice, people would trust me more. They'd look at me up and down. they go, oh, he knows what a good tattoo mm. is. And I was able to then get tattoos. Like people would let me tattoo them, even though I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like when I was learning how to tattoo. Oh, 100%. You look the part. You look like you should know, or you've been around at least, you know? Like, yeah. But now it's not always quite like that. Yeah. No. Nah. But it depends on what you're wanting, you know? Like it's all little weird subgenres of people want this and people want this. And I yeah. mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What's your opinion on people that don't have any tattoos that want to tattoo people? See, uh, I remember seeing all that shit. Even back in the day, there was um, a couple of artists that were like that, and they copped a lot of flack. And in my opinion, rightfully so. Yeah. You know, I think you should. That's that's just my thing. Like, I mean, it doesn't mean you got to be fully covered, but yeah. you, you should know what's it, it, what it's like to be on the other side of the table. You know sure. what I mean? Like, but well, yeah. I find those people. I know a couple of tattooers without tattoos, and they've got no empathy. And they'll say, "Oh, 
that person sat like shit. It's like, well, how do you even know? Like, you don't even know what it feels like, you piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you piece of <laughs> um, well, Editing for this episode. <laughs> no, I'm not going to edit any swearing out. But the, the, <laughs> like, you know, like I find people trust you as well more. Like, you know, Chris, you've got your knees tattooed. You could be sitting there tattooing someone's knee and then they'll be sitting there going, ah, but you'll be able to kind of give them some reinforcement, positive reinforcement. Like you're doing all right, man. It, it, yeah. it, is, it is a double-edged sword, I guess, because I have been there. So when mm. somebody's carrying on, it's like, eh, come on, man. Like, really? Yeah. I, I've been there. It's not that <laughs> bad. Like, suck it up. Come yeah. on. Like, but then there's other times where, yeah, it's like, I know before we even start, it's like, I know to expect you not to sit well because this is yeah. going to fucking suck. Yeah. You know? So, and I know that and yeah. you, you're ready for it, you know, but it's when it's in one of those easy spots when they're carrying on like that, it's like, yeah, come on, man. Like. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so. it's, I don't know, having tattoos, like, I don't know, you you can't be expected to give it and not be able to receive it. Mm. Like, yeah. Like, if you are if you want to be a tattoo artist, you have to at least have felt what it feels like because it's horrible. Mm. Mm. Yeah, get well, fucking so brapped yeah. on the ribs. <laughs> 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 like, some spots are horrible. Some yeah. spots are okay. But everybody's different, you know? Like, I personally, I don't mind getting tattooed. Mm. I know that a lot of people disagree with that. And to be honest, most tattooers sit like shit <laughs> to get tattooed. <laughs> That's just a fact. But yeah. I am, I'd like to think I'm not one of those. And everybody keeps saying, oh, it gets worse as you get older. I, I, I haven't hit that wall yet. I'm still keen every time I get tattooed. The first couple lines, I'm always like, why did I wait so long to get tattooed again? Sick. But that's me. Yeah. I think I've rewired my brain because it was like I like I said before I, I want to get tattooed till I die mm. and it's like you either learn to like that shit or it's gonna be a punishment every time yeah, a so slog. <laughs> yeah like yeah. you just learn to love the process and it's yeah well when I tattooed you it was so easy you sat like so well I um tattooed the back of your thigh and you killed it I don't even think I'd been tattooed for probably a good few years before that either. No. I was pretty nervous about that, actually. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, a new, new spot and, like, yeah, it had been a while. And like I said, every, everybody keeps saying, oh, it gets worse as you get older. And it's like, i um, waiting for that day. Yeah. But and we did a, um, like, a tattoo paint roll. Yes. Yeah. So you had rolled a, a devil, a tribal, and a dagger. For the video, that's okay. it there, yeah. That's <laughs> sick. So he did like a devil head with like tribal flames <laughs> with a dagger going through the devil head. That's right. And I rolled skull, eyeball and spider, web. spider webs. And so uh, Chris filled a, uh, a little spot on my, the top of my back. Rad. But um, yeah, you sat great, man. It was sick. Hell yeah. What an honour to tattoo you. Uh, it's, yeah. <sighs> Like I said, I don't get tattooed that much. And especially getting tattooed by people that you know, it's just takes it to a different level. You mm. know what I mean? It's not just a tattoo anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's so. a cool memory. It's my mentor. Oh, they all are. That's all they are. That's all tattoos are. Like, I mean, I can look at any one of my tattoos and I can tell you a story about it. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's one that I want to share or not is a whole other story. But yeah, they all have something. It's just a frame in time mm. that represents you or that time period or whatever was happening you know so yeah, yeah it's so cool man 100 percent. yeah i back to like i don't know tattoo is getting tattooed i think um i think it makes you more humane as well as a tattoo i find like sometimes the worst part of getting a tattoo for me is like not even the actual tattoo part but like the wipe <laughs> some people are <laughs> fucking brutal wipe hey <laughs> Like some people will dry yeah. wipe. Or like, oh. uh, I'm I'm probably a, a little guilty of the dry wipe. <laughs> no way, not, man. No way. I, I should clarify, not dry wipe because I'll lube all the time. Yeah. But I don't really use much for my spray bottle until mm. after the line work's done. Oh, yeah. So Lines aren't that bad, though. But, well, see, well, like, I think lines are shit. I think that's the worst part about getting a tattoo. I, I find wiping the lines isn't too brutal. I find mm. like 
It's when you're like getting in the shading or color towards the end. That's when the wiping is just it fucking just burns, <laughs> man. It's like fucking <laughs> sandpaper. You know, I, I try to be so gentle of actually also cleaning it away and actually seeing what I'm doing. Mm. But some people can just like. Mm. I got like, oh I got God. a little I got a little tattoo from a good friend of mine mm. uh, a couple of months ago. I'm not going to say who it is because they're probably going to listen to this and they'll know who the fuck this is. <laughs> and they did a little tattoo on me and from start to finish was like dry wiping but like doing this like crazy like like pulling thing i was like i was like oh bro you got to get some liquid on that on that towel please bro and he's like can you stop complaining <laughs> and i'm just like oh sorry mate and i just like sat there quietly and i just got punished hey eh? and i was driving home and like where the tattoo was it's not anywhere here, but where the tattoo was, around the tattoo was just bright red from like the wiping. It was the, it hurt more than the tattoo. Yeah. And I said, never again. Wow. And at the very end, I said, I love you as a person, but I'm never going to get another tattoo from you ever again. Oh, Because <laughs> of the dry wipe. Yeah. Oh, well. I'll probably cut that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, so, so what are you cutting again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's fucking, it's brutal. It is brutal. It's well, brutal. yeah, like I, I've been on the end of your, I've, I've probably been tattooed by you maybe four times or five times now, and yeah, every time was fine. I except for the top of my head, and I really had a horrible, horrible time. Oh I, yeah, I knew that was going to be the case though. Yeah, you know, like yeah. That was punishment yeah, that for me. Would, that would be gnarly. But I'm, I'm really stoked with what it looks like. It looks really cool. Yeah. Probably needs a touch up. Definitely needs a touch up. <laughs> but Only because I was fucking that, sitting like yeah, shit. Yeah. We, yeah. we tried to do too much in a shit spot in one session. Yeah. 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 Have, you, have you used numbing cream? Personally? Yeah. Like or, on myself or, or on yeah. clients. I don't like numbing cream at all. Mm. Um for a lot of reasons. Um, it changes the skin from the ones that I have used. Um, I just don't like it. Yeah. I find it's easy to overwork tattoos because sometimes you need to have that person to be like, oh, dude, that sucks. And when they don't do that, I think there was a lot of people that were really trenching people and overworking because they just didn't have that feedback of, yeah, yeah you just sit there and I'm just going <laughs> to saturate this like... <laughs> This overexposed photo that I see, you know, like yeah. sure. So, yeah, it's tricky, eh? Mm. I think if I was to get my head redone <laughs> or like touched up, I would one hundred percent be using numbing cream. Uh, I just couldn't. I couldn't sit it again. It was horrible. Yeah, getting your dome done. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty garbage. Yeah, I I got the back of my head done. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I was nine. 19, 19. and um, yeah, it's only been probably the last maybe five years where I've thought I was ready to get my head tattooed again <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> like it was garbage. Like, oh, but I I'd only been tattooing for like a couple of years at that point. It was my mm. first tattoo trip. It was my first time on a plane. It was just like all this stuff, and I wasn't about to like pull the guy up on anything. But yeah, just shit positions like no arm bar no resting i was just back of my head with him oh, standing and just oh holy yeah and big like 300 pound x skin head from <laughs> philly doing this yeah and <laughs> the bigger the guy i always find the worse it feels you know because oh, all wow. they think about is oh, I gotta, <laughs> you know um <laughs> gotta get it in oh yeah and, and it was it was <laughs> fucking horrible it's horrible oh no <laughs> yeah so, and I just remember because I was at Slaves in the Needle getting it done, and some of the guys there, they were just like, Yeah, well, no sympathy. Like, yeah. you, you know, you came and that's what you wanted, and hey, buckle up, here you are, kind of thing. That's and it. That, that was yeah, about holy. it. But yeah, it was, it was brutal. From the, from the whole dome, though, having the whole dome tattooed, like sides, top, back, the back was. Far comfier than anywhere else. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's what scares me. That I'm like thinking I'm ready for it again. <laughs> oh God! Because you dis disillusioned uh, or something delusional is probably the right word. Yeah, wild. Man, it, was, it was rad because you did a um, like a lantern and a snake yeah, and like sad. a sun on the back of my head, and yeah, it was it, I, it was okay. It was I remember we got the whole thing done, and I seemed to. 
that's what set you up for such a bad time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Off because oh, you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. It'll be great. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. but that was that was a good thing about getting my head done so early, too, is um, it really changed how I approached getting tattoos and yeah. that, that side of it. Because, to be honest, I think tattooing or getting tattooed is 90% mental. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure you've had it where, like, your client, you can see they, they broke. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's a point where you can talk people back down and get them back to finish tattoos. Mm. But there is a point where they broke and there's nothing that's going to get any more out of them. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. if you go into it like that, and like for me, I guess now every tattoo, it's like, this is going to be the one that makes me not want to get tattooed again. Mm. And it just never happens because I guess luckily... I got that done early and it was like the fucking worst thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like everything's felt a whole lot easier. Even yeah, like knees, it was like whatever, backs of the knees, whatever, you know, yep. like Yeah, wow. See, but I think healing tattoos is worse oh, than getting tattooed. The end. One hundred percent. Just <laughs> but it's horrible. Gnarly. We're um we're pretty much up on time, gentlemen. Oh. But yeah, I, I'd like to sort of finish up this episode by saying thank you so much yeah. for having us in your shop, Tattoo Tattoo in Yapoon, Chris. Mm. Uh, it's such a pleasure to see you, man. Like we've driven such a long way and, and I'm so stoked to get to talk to you and put you on put you on the record and talk, <laughs> ask you some questions. Yeah. Not a problem. It was good. Uh, good we actually got a chance to sit and chat this time. I think last time uh, kids keep you busy, so... Uh-huh. Yeah, I couldn't hang out like uh, like I wanted to, but uh, yeah, no, it was good. Nah, Sometimes dude. it works out. Yeah, it did. It really did work out, yeah. and um, I've really enjoyed myself. So have I. It's yeah. been great, and we've. I feel like I've learned some stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. So I anyway, don't know. I feel like I just talked a lot of shit, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. So, so many more stories. Oh well. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, next time. <laughs> Come up to Cairns, man. Oh, I know. We've been talking about it forever. Well, yeah. I'll get there. I'll get Come there. and check out Royal Blue, man. 100%. All right. On that, rats get fat. We're out. See yous. Goodbye.